Yo, yo, YouTube. This is my video for today, which is Wednesday the 14th of August. So, stats for today. I'm still on my first tank of fuel for the week. So it's still 13.88 pence per mile driven. Today I've driven 263 miles, 263. And I will have worked for 11 and 3 quarter hours by the time I get home. I have earned gross 210 pounds from three CX jobs. And I've spent 36 pounds and 50 pence on fuel. Therefore, my net earnings after fuel for today is 173 pounds, 173. going to talk through my day and then a couple of reflections on um, what I could have done differently today and what I might do differently in the future and then I'll just give you a quick recap of my first, for a while at least, my first talking therapy. So first of all I had a job booked in yesterday afternoon going from Sleaford and two drops in Loughborough. Sleaford uh, was between, pick up between 8 and 9 and it was 35 minutes from my house, about 22 dead, dead miles, miles away. So I left the house at 7.40 and I arrived at 8.17 but they weren't ready for me and once they um, had got me loaded and I was off site it was 8.48 so I didn't really need to leave quite as early as I did but you don't know these things do you until you, until you get there so I'd rather be there and sort of wait politely than arrive a bit later um, this job was for a long wheelbase van it was just two pallets two quite sizable pallets sort of height wise but they could fit on my van quite easily um, the job was around about 65 loaded miles and I got that for a very fair price of £100. And I got that when I was lying in my dialysis bed on Thursday afternoon. Now, just a quick note about that. So, on one of the advantages to lying it down semi-recumbent in my bed and have dialysis is I can do quite a lot of stuff like watching videos or reading texts or replying to people. But and, and I can bid on jobs very easily. The signal in my area is quite poor and what I hate doing is answering the phone in the wards because obviously everyone can hear me but there's nothing I can do about that. So I tend to f I tend to feel quite tired anyway so if anyone calls me to offer me a job on a Thursday or Tuesday afternoon I'm probably sounding a bit out of it and quite hushed and maybe I'm trying to rush the conversation. I'm sort of saying, yeah, I can do that for you, thank you very much. And then I'm sort of hoping that they'll get off quickly. So, slightly different style of answering the phone than usual. And that was the case when I answered it to this particular shipper, who is someone who I've worked with before, and um, I like. So, I um, took this load to Loughborough. Um, I didn't worry about um, the order they were loaded on for on and on because both boats go to any 12 but in the end one was sort of 25 minutes away from the other and I could have chosen to do it the other way around but actually I'm quite happy the way where I did it because I'll, I'll tell you why when I, when I, now so I ended up getting to Loughborough first and then the other one was sort of about um, 12 miles or so north of Loughborough and almost midway between Loughborough and Nottingham. So when I offloaded my second pallet, although, oh yes, I will tell you about that actually. The second, the first one was fine. It was just going to a, um, a, a distributor and it was a normal goods in. They just brought, they took off the load as they always do with a full lift. But the second one was going to um, I don't know what it was, I can't really go, I'm not going to name them, but it was sort of a, how can I describe it, a, a, a massive site where there was aggregate stuff being 
moved around. Uh, it's almost like it was a mine or a, a mining kind of operation. And the bit I was taking to was to the mine. There was a company that was, had a mine in the name. But there was other parts of the company that weren't to do with this particular place. Anyway, the, when I first went into the security uh, gate and explained where I was going, I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to tell you this story because it was. I found it really weird. And if, if you're a driver, and you might have experienced this yourself. Now, in the main, I'm going to say that most security guards I come across are great. They're helpful and they're diligent, and they, they you know. They, they, I know it's a boring job, but when you come along, you've got, they've got something to do. On this occasion, I pulled up to the um, stop sign in front of the gates, opened my passenger's side window, and then the, the security guard was in his window. And I said, do you want me to come in? Uh, or do you want me to stay in the van? And he said, stay in your van now. And in, a, in a bit of a chippy way, but I thought, oh, maybe I oh, just remember it wrong. And then I was explaining where I was going, I read out, and he, he asked me to read out to him what was on the paperwork. So I read out what was, up to, what was, on, what was on there, and he was asking me questions like, where, who is it for? And so I read out, well, this is the name I've got. And he sort of said, well, I think you might need to go over here, he directed me that way. And I said, right, okay, should I just show you the, show you the paperwork? And he said, no, don't get out of your van. And that was a bit I thought was strange. Because I could have just showed him it. Because in the end, there was a bit in brackets that I thought was the name of a person, but actually was the name of the company. And when I said, oh, there's another bit here, this name, he instantly knew where I was to send me. So if he'd just allowed me to show me the paperwork, rather than be asking me verbal questions about it, because it wasn't really, it was like a, a place, TA, another place, in brackets, another place, another name. So it was, there's three sort of separate names, and I, I was obviously on the, the site was correct, because I see the sign on the site. But the second name, I didn't know where that was. So anyway, I thought that if you just looked at the paper, you'd have gone, oh yeah, I know what that is, it just been, been easy. But he just wanted to be a bit weird about it. Um, it's not like we're in COVID or anything, you know, there's nothing should get me out of my van, there's no one behind me. I could have moved my van back if you wanted me to. And yeah, that's the other thing. He said, "Move your van forward." Look, because I couldn't. See. He was pointing out. So uh, when, he, when he said to where to go, he was pointing out a building. And he was saying, "Can you see that grey building over there?" But you know, doing it in a very sarcastic tone. <laughs> and he said, "Can you see the blue door?" And I couldn't see it. But he, said, he said to me, "Move forward, and then you'll be able to see it." So I drove forward a meter. Oh yeah, there's the blue door. I can see it. And then he said, "Now come back to me." I thought, oh come on, mate. You just this is just getting ridiculous now. So I had to reverse up a meter so that we we, we, we could see each other again. But I could Beverly, hear him perfectly well. And so he, so he let me in. Then it was it was pointless. I think he just wanted a bit of a power trip. Anyway, got in, got to the right, got to the place that I was directed to go to eventually. But then he, the guy that I met, which was which was in in a porter cabin. Um, he explained that I had to get my van the other side of a metal gate that separated out where he was from the office. Which meant going back out of the site, around the outside, over a bridge, under a railway bridge, and then back in to another entrance. So I did that. Now, I could see from where I'd started off where I was aiming to get to, and I could see the building. I made a really silly error here. When I came in the, the second security gate, the guy, because I was in a van and there's lots of lorries, the lorries were being weighed. Because I was in a van, I needed to stop. I needed to stop. But he just said to me, "Do you know where you're going?" And I said, "I said confidently, yes, thinking I could see where the building is. That's where I'm, that's where I'm heading to." And I got on site, and then I realised, no, I didn't know where I was going at all. And I wish I hadn't said yes. I wish I'd just said no. Please help me. Anyway, eventually I found the building, but it took me quite a long time. And then eventually I um, got someone to help me unload. Eventually I was unloaded, but it took me quite a long time to do that. So what time? To, I've already down. So I, I was finished with that second load and off site by. Hmm. 
seven o'clock-ish. So I drove off the site and parked up at a nearby, nearby lay-by and had a look for some few, for other jobs. And I got a job come up um, not not long after, it was about half past eleven. It wasn't a massive wait. And it was going from Loughborough. Oh yeah, so so where I was was right between um, Loughborough and Derby and Nottingham. So it was really quite good to have access to the other jobs that from Nottingham. And, and most of the jobs to be out were from Nottingham. Um, but I did in the end get one from Loughborough going to Warsaw. And I was 20 minutes away, seven miles from the pickup. It was a short wheelbase van job. And I bid 50, load, 50 pounds for 50 miles loaded. So, made my way to Loughborough. Was there um, by about quarter past, 20 past, yeah, quarter past 12. And I got loaded up, and then it was about an hour and a half to get me to Warsaw. I arrived at my drop-off point um, at two o'clock. Well, that's when I finished. So now I was looking for a third job and I was hoping to get back towards home ideally. Um, and I was quite hungry so I went and got some food and I was I ended up parking up. Uh, I think it was at, I ended up being at Wolverhampton, I was ended up being um, right next to the Molyneux Stadium. I've never been there before, but it was quite impressive. And again, quite an impressive sight to behold. Uh, so there's like an Asda car park there, and I parked there for a bit. And then by three o'clock, about an hour, so it took me about an hour, I got my third, and in the end, as it was, last job. And that was collected from Oldbury and going to Derby, which is really in the right direction for me to start going home. Um, it was, it said on the notes, it was a three o'clock pickup, and I'd bid on this sort of about half an hour before three o'clock, and then it had gone off the system. And then I got a call out of the blue, and then I was off with the job. At, three, at one minute past three. So I don't know if somebody let them down, or if, uh, what happened, whether they accepted another bid. But my bid was £60 for a um, long wheelbase van job going 52 loaded miles. So I did say to the lady who gave me the job, I'm going to be um, 30 minutes and she was fine with that. So I don't think the 3pm pickup was particularly important. Or, and, I, and, the, and also when I got to the pickup point, uh, they weren't particularly bothered about it being half past three when I arrived. So they all seemed quite happy. So I got loaded up with a a door, a like um, it was a metal door. But I, basically, it was, it was a when I arrived on site, I worked out it was a rear exit door of a gym, and obviously they were, they were doing up the gym or re and replacing a broken door. But this door was really quite heavy, um, and I got that. I left site at 3.35 and I arrived at 5.40, mainly because of the traffic being quite busy. Um, in the interim, I was on my way to Derby and I did, I did put a bid on a job going from Nottingham to London um, for tonight and I sort of put on what amount of money that I would prefer to do it for, but I didn't really want to do it because it was quite a long day. But then I didn't really want to not, not do it either because of the money. So I was really torn. And I got a call about it. And so I said to the guy, I'm on my way to Derby now to offload. I'll be finished there about quarter to six. And then I'll be over to Derby, um, Nottingham, sorry, in time for your pickup at half past six. It was half past six pickup. And it was about two and a half hours to get to London from there. And he said, oh, as you've still got goods on board, let's leave it for now and if it's still available when you've offloaded give us a call back so I thought fair enough and in a way I was kind of happy I didn't get that job 
so I'll say again, I was really happy because of the time, and I'm, I'm a bit tired, but I was unhappy because of the money. So there's always that, there's always that push and pull um, with this sort of job, is doing one more job for that bit more money, but then it, it makes your day longer, or it gets you in the wrong area. And at the moment, I'm sort of focusing a bit more on getting home every night, and I'm not really making the most of the time. So I've got two things that I'm going to perhaps do differently. Um, I've made basically £210 a day. And if I'd made £300 a day, um, no matter what Deb Miles would have done, it would have been a good day. So I can do that. If, I did, if I'd done that job to London, I'd have made an extra £125. So that would have been a total of £335. And I would have got home about half past 11. So that was basically the the, the, um, the the decision I had to make. And would I do a day with £335 um, take off your for that long a day? And I probably would, but I didn't today, did I? So my point is, I probably need to do a few more of those jobs at the end of the day, which are going to make the day long, but will be breaking the breaking the money. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding it at the moment but I probably need to do at least one of those a week. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to think about doing. I need to be more prepped with food for the day um, and I need to perhaps be a bit more um, strategic about where I go and what, when I get to places. But to be, f oh, to be fair though, um, strategy is a bit um, of a non-starter at the moment because it's so quiet. Um, so yes, yeah, so it, it is August. I'm guessing it's quiet because of the school holidays. Um, it definitely feels quieter than it has been at other points in the year. And it definitely feels like also the CX is really low rates at the moment. So even if you get jobs, you're getting them at quite low rates at the moment. So it, there's all kind of it's like like, like a, a perfect storm really of low rates, low number of jobs and then me working part-time. Anyway, the other thing I was thinking about was I, um, a job for the morning. So I did bid on a job from Grantham to Boston in the morning. I didn't get it in the end. And I put on £60 for it. It was about 33 miles. I think it was a long reverse job. Yeah, it was a long reverse job. So that actually would have been a nice little bit of money before I did my dialysis. And I think I need to perhaps do that. If I do that a couple of times, um, I can't do a couple of times. If, if, if I do that, yeah, maybe I do it on Saturday morning, possibly. So if I do it a couple of times a week, that might just add that little bit more that makes the week work out for me. So I think there's a bit of jiggling I can do with my week to get my target. My target in my head is about eight fifty, eight eight fifty a week. Um, it's, if I get eight hundred, it's fine. If I get eight fifty, it's also fine. It's a bit more flexibility. And roughly, from my last video, half that's for business costs, and half that's for um, for me. Um, and that'll be I can tick I can tick over for that if I need to, um, which is the position I'm in at the moment. Anyway, what else? Oh yes, next thing I was going to say is yesterday morning I did go back and have my first talking therapy session. Now I have done a previous video about my experience with therapy, and just to summarise. Um, I was very much against it for years and years and years because I was going to sort out my own problems and no therapist could tell me what to do. But then eventually I did try it about six years ago and it was actually quite useful. Um, I, I did about eight sessions with one therapist, having, having tried two before that that didn't really work for me. And then I just thought, I've done enough for now, this will be enough and I'll come back to it another time. And then in the last six years, at various points, I have thought, I need to go back to therapy now. And I've just always avoided it. Um, and I know that I, I am kind of that way inclined. I know my character well enough that I will tend to put these things off, mainly because I would think it costs too much money. But I'm now at the point where I just can't avoid it anymore. There's so much that I need to resolve. Um, and the way that I would see it is... Um, I am pretty good at analysing my thoughts and I know my, hist my history and my character and so I can pretty much 
um, identify what the problems are and where they've come from, but what I can't do is heal those, heal those traumas. And um, I need a therapist to help me do that. So I did eventually, after a lot of um, prevarication, book in a therapist appointment yesterday for the first time in about six years. And I'm just gonna say, it's a male therapist, we've not had that before. I think it's gonna work for me. I think he feels like he's the right balance of talking and listening. And I, in the end, we went over time and we did a double session for the first one in the end because there was just so much that I was sort of going through. It's more really introducing him to me and sort of a summary of the things that I know it's happened to me and there's a, yeah so and, and there's quite a lot there is quite a lot so that that's my what I'm gonna say about the therapy it's I'm, 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 I'm being I'm positive about it at the moment and I'm going to go every Tuesday morning um, for an hour or like 50, 50 minutes and then we'll see where that leads us um, one of the things that um, kind of reminded me about yesterday was quite a lot of stuff has happened to me in my life that, have, that has negative um, sort of consequences, negative effects. But I don't think I'm unique. I think all people have a lot of negative things that happened to them. And whether you choose to ignore them or engage with them is up to you and your character. Um, I was talking to the therapist about just a few things, then the next thing came up, another thing came up, and then eventually another thing came up. Ended up talking for the best part of two hours uh, about the things that I knew I had to deal with. So, why, the reason why I mentioned that is, and this next bit might not, might not make sense because I have planned it, but it, it, it comes to mind, and, and hopefully you know me well enough if you've seen a few of my videos to get what I'm saying. Um, the point is that I'm a complex character, I'm a complex person, but everyone is a complex person. And I feel that we tend as humans to um, navigate towards people that look and sound like us. Um, and that's like our tribal mentality. And I think we tend as humans to try and simplify people. So, YouTube is a good example of this. Um, YouTube gives me some stats about who views me. Basically, it gives me three stats. How people define their gender, male or female. What their age is in various um, groupings, like, I don't know, it'd be like 50 to 60, 25 to 40, 40, 50. I don't know what they are, but it's sort of groupings. So you know there's groupings. And then it's finally says where they're based in the in the world. And obviously most people who view my channel are over 50, male and living in England. Now, the point I want to make is, as humans, if we're not careful, we tend to just clump all 50-year-old men living in England as being the same. But every single audience member that watches my or listens to my channel will have his, his or her own experiences, own personality, own um, physical and mental health, own history, and that makes us all completely unique. So trying to kind of, and the reason I mention this is, what I notice on social media is people assume stuff about other people because of their gender or their age or their work. And I just think that's really poor way of looking at people. People are just fascinatingly different. And um, the other thing on this note is, um, let's say I've got my best friend, and I've got someone in mind who's my best friend, and we agree on most things, because I think we have a similar outlook on, on life. But if we didn't agree on Let's say, let's say we had a discussion about ten things. Like, let's say they supported, I don't know, a different football club to me. I mean, I'm not 
not going to um, suddenly dismiss them because we have what one thing not in common anymore. It just makes them, you know, different, a bit different to me. And let's say they've they're not married, and I am married. Then we still agree on a lot of stuff, but they've got a different perspective on life. So um, I don't need to agree with everything everyone else says to feel that other people have um, value and have are deserving of mute respect and are deserving of being treated kindly and listened to. But I, what I perceive with social media is it's an us or them situation. If you don't agree with me on this, this point and this point and this point, then we can't be you know, together, we can't be friends, we can't be you know, civil with each other. And I think that's what I see social media does, how that does harm to people. Now I hope I've explained that because it makes sense in my head what I was saying, but it might not make sense to, to you if you don't think about things this way. So I think I'll leave it there and I'll move on to what I'm doing next. So tomorrow, not got a job in the morning yet, I'm going to look for a small job in the morning, 50, 60 pound job, which will just make this week a bit better. And I've got dialysis tomorrow and I will respond to Sean's second comment, which was really um, good, tomorrow when I'm sitting in my dialysis chair and um, I shall then be back at work on Friday, although I do have a hospital appointment on Friday in the middle of the day, so it's going to make that really awkward. Um, so, but yeah, so that's that. Then I'll probably try and get a job booked in for Saturday morning if I can, locally if that's possible, just to make more, a bit more money. Anyway, um, on the money side, it's all a bit um, up in the air still, and uh, I'm just sort of trying to navigate a way through that works for me. And um, so far, I've not found quite the right pattern that works, but we'll, I, I can't, I'm going to keep persevering. Oh, so finally, I think, I thought I'd say about this today, I was thinking, if I was a pessimist, I would be giving up so easily. But I'm just not, I'm just more of a naturally optimistic person. So I tend to think, well, let's just try this then. If that hasn't worked, let's try this. But I reckon a pessimist might go, well, that hasn't worked, I'm not going to do anything else. So I, I don't know, that might be unfair, but I get, I get a sense that having resilience helps if you're optimistic. And um, giving up is easier if you're pessimistic. Um, if you have a view on that, feel free to share it with me. But remember, don't tell me what to do, because I'm a stubborn old goat and I won't take it, take it. Unless, of course, you're a kind, caring individual that is looking at my best interests. In which case, I might listen to you. Depends if I agree or not. It's complex, isn't it? It's a, it's a complex situation, this, isn't it? Us and me and you. We have this, this toing and froing situation. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop there. Thank you for listening to my video. I hope that you are being successful, however you choose to find that word for yourselves. And I shall speak to you Friday. Farewell, friends.